Welcome to your capital, What's Up? I'm Chuck Wigger, your area state senator. Thank you very much for watching. Today, I'm going to visit with Hannah Bata. She's the president of the Tartan Student Council. Welcome to our show, Hannah. Thank you for having me. Well, you're the president of the student council, <laughs> and we're going to be talking about those issues. Uh, maybe you had a campaign to get elected, uh, but more importantly than, you know, what is the student council doing and uh, maybe first you could just give us a brief overview of what the council is then we're going to talk a little bit about you just growing up in the area and uh, some of your career plans and then back more into the uh, the roles and uh, challenges faced by the council but overall what does the council do um, overall, the council is just a group of selected representatives from each of the grades, similar as it is to the U.S. governmental system. Okay. And we basically just plan out events throughout the year, and we fundraise and just kind of set things or set things for the school year very okay. well. And you're selected or elected or combination? We're elected or selected. It's kind of it's kind of a weird system how it runs, but there are. As it runs in our Constitution, we have six students that are selected by a vote, popular vote for the grades, and then we have four that are elected by the, or selected by the um, advisors for our student council. So it's kind of a combination okay. of the two. Okay. Uh, was there a campaign platform when you sought the support of your colleagues? Um, the there wasn't so much of a, a campaign platform. It's more so just kind of campaigning within your peers, making sure that they know that you're dedicated to what you're going to be saying you're going to do and then just kind of letting them know that you're interested in that. Okay, and I know you're very active at Tartan. Uh, tell us some of the highlights in terms of your activities. Uh, well, we do a lot of things through the year. I'd say our biggest event that we do is with our homecoming. We do several events, including a homecoming coronation where we elect a, um, different classes, king and queen, and then we do pet fest, we do a dance. We also do kickball tournaments for homecoming and Tartan is special and we have an incoming as well. Mm -hmm. And that is actually coming up this February. Tell us and about it's, the incoming. It's it's similar to homecoming. It's a week long event, and we have a coronation pet fest. But instead of a volleyball or instead of an, a kickball tournament, we have a volleyball tournament that mm -hmm. week. And we kind of just do things each year to make it special, since we pretty much do the same events each year. We do dances and stuff like that. So this year, I think we're just trying to make it that much more special with the events that we have. Great. So it's very positive programs that you're involved in, get students involved. Uh, there's also a lot of giving back to the students and the community that yes. the council is involved in. Tell us about that. Yes. In fact, that's um, my favorite event that we do by far is our Holiday Helping Hands. Have you ever heard of that? Yes. Yes. Holiday Helping Hands is kind of a community event and in which we uh, soon or suit um, some families are elected within the community, yes. and they're kind of selected through a system to make sure that they're like um, determined to be in need. And we raise money through the school, and that's kind of ran by the student council. And then we go out and deliver gifts, and it's my favorite thing that we do. We always do it in the winter. Uh, unfortunately, this year was it was the day that we had that huge blizzard, so mm -hmm. we, the students weren't able to go and give out the gifts. But mm -hmm. the, um, they were delivered, though, and that's kind of what is important. Okay, we're going to touch more on these activities in a bit. But uh, tell us more about yourself. Where were you born? I was born here in Minnesota, and I've lived here my whole entire life. Okay. And uh, growing up, where'd you go to school? I went to, well, I've been in District 62 my entire life. I went to preschool at Stepping Stones, and then I went to Skyview Elementary School and Middle School, and then Stepping not here Stones, you're truly <laughs> a product of 622 there. <laughs> yes, 100%. Okay. Do you remember any of the activities in Stepping Stones? No, not at all. Okay. But activities, lots of activities that you're involved in, and it's good to have the family involved, I know, yes. for different things. I was involved as a school board member in getting that started, so yeah. it's good to see it uh, a generation <laughs> later uh, for people that are involved, especially successful students. Thank you. And went to elementary school at? Skyview Elementary School. Okay. Yep. And uh, any memory that you'd like to share about uh, going to school there? Um... I think my favorite thing about Skyview Elementary, the one thing that stands out to me, was the Skyview Carnival, just because it was always around my birthday, and my mom always took a primary role in planning that out, so that was definitely the one thing that I loved being a part of, and I always remember setting up for it and taking it apart, and I just loved being at the carnival. Definitely my favorite thing in Skyview. Okay. So you're obviously a very uh, social, gregarious, outgoing <laughs> I'd like person. to think so. Well, very good. And... Uh, 
any other activities that you were involved in at an early age? Um, I've always been involved in sports. I did track and swimming through, or while I was in Skyview through Tartan, and I, well, at track I did through Skyview, and I've also swam on club teams and did that kind of thing, and I was also on student council while at Skyview as well. Well, that's very impressive. Uh, what events in track? I run long distance, and I kind of do mid-distance as well, but more so long distance, and that allows me to be able to do triathlons as well in the summer, so I You do I love triathlons it. when yeah. you have Yeah, I've only done one. I've only done one. <laughs> okay. But I definitely want to do more, and since I haven't, I'm not going to be pursuing swimming when I go to college, I want to be able to at least keep that up athletic as well. Okay. And at Tartan, you mentioned some of the activities, additional uh, projects that you've been involved in that you'd like to mention? Um, yeah, I love being involved. I think that that is definitely my one um, advice for incoming freshmen is just to stay involved because that's really the way that I made the most out of my high school experience. Mm -hmm. And ways that I've done that is through National Honor Society, and that's a core volunteering group. I've yes. also been involved in High Schools Against Cancer, which is the committee that plans out Relay for Life for Tartan, which is a huge, huge school-wide event. We're ranked third in the nation for money raised per student, so that's a really big thing, and I love being involved in that. Yeah, it's just incredible. The Amazing, uh, yes. Efforts that have been done, and it's yes. caught fire to so many other schools. North is very um, proud of what they're doing now as well. Yes. But, uh, you know, Tartan has set the model for the country, I believe. Oh, yes definitely and I think that it's amazing even though we're not that big of a community the outreach that we get is just outstanding and I couldn't be more proud to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Where did you get this desire to serve? Um, to give back? I don't know. I, don't, home? I, I think so I mean I guess that's the only, way, or only thing that I could think of. I haven't really ever thought of anything else. I think my parents set the tone for just a need to do that just because I mean we're given so many opportunities especially with our school system that you kind of need to get back in order to, or you need to give back in order to know where you've been and mm -hmm. in order to know where you're going and that kind of thing. Okay now as a student council president you preside over the meetings and you have a, a dozen or so uh, colleagues that are on that Oh, we have uh, about uh, 41 was the last I heard, okay. members on student council. So like a mini legislature. Yes. You, you have, um, but it's good <laughs> to have representation from a variety of points of view. And um, are there ever, ever controversial issues? Uh, a lot of it is p programs, plans, and good positive things. Mm -hmm. Are there ever any of the issues that maybe the administration might be uh, challenged with where they're seeking guidance? Um, I wouldn't say there is. I don't, I can't really think or pinpoint anything. I'd say probably the most controversial that we have is just how the student council is ran itself. I think yes. that probably the biggest thing that we've had to overcome this year has been the communication both within the student council and the school mm -hmm. just because most people aren't aware of what's going on and it's hard to get anything accomplished if you aren't aware of what's going on or okay. anything like that. Um, so I'd say that's probably one of the most controversial things is because some people want it to be ran one way versus the other, and I think that's something that we, we need know to that's agree on. The capital too, yeah, so. kind of the same problem everywhere. Okay, but to overcome that, you just you, know, you meet with people, you talk about it, and see well, how can we do a better job. Yes, definitely. And are there some non-traditional ways that you have for communicating to the student body? Um, I think that. We have done as much as we can to advertise things, and I think that that's something that we've done much, much better this year than we have mm -hmm. in previous years. I have an amazing student council behind me, and we've done so many things to advertise things, such as like writing on the stalls and the bathrooms, done. Okay. De we decorate the school for homecoming, so it really just. Well, it's with permission, right? With permission. Okay. Everything we do is with permission. Okay. And, uh, um, yeah, we do flyers, we pass out things to the students, and especially within the student council, I think this year I've done mm. mo spent most of my time trying to fix communication, like passing out calendars and stuff, so mm. everyone knows the dates and times of everything, and we meet weekly, mm. so that helps too. Yeah. Hannah, so many wonderful projects about getting involved, and what about f for those students that don't get involved, that don't feel they're fitting in? Uh, do you feel obligated to reach out to them too, or are there 
alternative ways for that type of engagement for students. And I think in particular uh, some of the groups from Tartan that visit us uh, talking about you know, bullying or uh, you know, violence issues or you know text messaging problems or just you know it's tough growing up and you know sometimes we we hear from students on some of the you know the sadder issues as well that they're faced with um, obviously student council like you can't do it all and you mm -hmm. want to promote positive behaviors but uh, has there ever been a reach out to those that may not feel they fit in I think there has and I think that that's definitely one thing I would love to do is be able to make sure that everyone feels included. That's what we try to do is include everyone and of course that's impossible um, to make sure that every single person is included but I think that the opportunity for everyone is there and even if it's not you know participating in the homecoming events that we put on or volunteering at Holiday Helping Hands or reaching out to the community I think that there's an activity for everyone. I really, really think so. We have an amazing SAD group, which I would love to be involved in, and they do the... Tell us what SAD is, the Students Against... Yep, Students Against Destructive, de dis 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 oh, destructive Decisions, okay. and they put on the, you know, drunk driving things during prom, and they just finished a violence prevention week, yes. and that's similar to the Students Against destruct destruct Destructive to Decisions. Well, yes. I'm never going to join that group because I can't say the name. But yeah, I mean, I really think that there's something for everyone. And even if it's not, you know, within the mm -hmm. school, join a sport. I think there's anything that's possible. Yes. Uh, and by the way, the, the SAD group, they do come down here at the Capitol and, you know, share testimonials as well. So it, it's good to have that inclusion. Yes. And are there additional things that might be done to get more students involved? Uh, any ideas? I, I can't see how you would have time yourself. <laughs> you are very good at organizing and mobilizing people. Yeah. Are there some additional opportunities out there that might help uh, more students? Yeah, I try my best, but I think that the biggest thing, especially at Tartan, the one thing that I think everyone goes back to is just Relay for Life, because that's something that no matter what group you in, no matter or, or you're in, no matter where you find yourself, yes. it's so easy to just join a team. It can be anywhere from eight to ten people, and it's doing something amazing, giving back to the community. And there's so and many ways of you can. Hundreds of thousands of dollars have been oh, yeah. raised can, in Relay for for life, and, but it all starts with the students mm -hmm. you know, uh, going out, raising funds, getting pledges, uh, and you know, it, there's something for everybody in there. Yeah, and we've raised over $800,000 um, so far, so and that's only going up, so definitely a great, great thing to be involved in, and that's what I encourage students to do who can't find themselves okay. or anywhere. Okay. Now, the student council meets how often? Every week. Okay. What day? Thursday. Thursday. Thursday mornings, yes. Okay, and then you have an advisor? Yes, we do. And we have two advisors this okay. year. Okay, and tell, uh, tell us who they are. Um, well, our advisors have kind of been, they've switched every year, and that's mm -hmm. kind of been, I think, difficult, and that's probably why we had such a loss of communication for a little bit. Okay. Um, we had, we've had, so we've had three advisors so far, and then this year we have two new, two new ones, and okay. they are Mr. Murphy and Mr. DeCourcy, and they both work in the Tartan Administration Building, so okay. it's really, really nice to be able to have ties through that with our advisors, okay. and they basically play a key role in administering our meetings, making sure that everything is you know, coincides with the school rules and um, helps us thinking of ideas and stuff and executing our um, events. Okay. H have you ever had a vote that wasn't unanimous? Yes, we have, okay. definitely. Give us an example of <laughs> how you resolve conflict uh, on the council. Um, well, I Ultimately, think, the vote resolves it. Yeah, uh, perfect example I can think of is we plan out dress up days for the weeks. We just finished planning out the dress up days for our incoming week. Okay. And I think that even though it might, might seem like a pretty minor um, uh, like disagreement, mm -hmm. um, I'd say that there, that's definitely a good example of something that we disagreed on. Mm -hmm. And that would be like just people not agreeing on days that they want, but we can okay. just resolve that by, we have three choices, so top three. If you don't, then if your vote doesn't get chosen, then we can always do that for another week, mm -hmm. such as next year's homecoming or spring fling or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, you're a senior. Yes. Um, I'm sure you've got some ambitious plans for the future. Tell us about that. 
Well, I don't really have my future planned out, but I can definitely see myself pursuing a career in journalism. I would love to do broadcast journalism and work for um, any of the major news stations here or throughout the nation, anywhere. I would absolutely love that just because I love being involved, like I said before, in events like that. And just having a key role in the community, being able to be that voice for the people, I love. And I couldn't find anything that I have a bigger passion for than that. Um, but other than that, I am kind of just looking into college right now, so seeing how that is going to, where that's going to take me. Okay. Well, there's many opportunities in the Twin Cities markets, and uh, I'm sure you're going to get a handle on that in the near future. So. <laughs> yes, I hope to. Now, your coat that you wore in your uh, letter letter person's jacket. <laughs> Letterman's uh, jacket. And your, yes. your mother's here. I, could she just hand that to you? I'd okay. Like, I've, uh, there are so many symbols on here. Could you just tell us uh, again what this is all for? Okay, well, can you see this? This one is for swimming, and this is the student council one. This one's for National Honor Society, and this star is what you get if you're a captain. Could, could you hold it up? Oh, okay. yeah, sorry. This is the star. Can you see it? This yeah. is the star that you get if you're either a captain or a president, and I think this is the one that I got for captain of the swim team. I didn't buy one for <laughs> captain or president at all because it's kind of expensive. It adds up. They're expensive. Well, I don't know if you have room unless you put no. it inside the jacket. <laughs> and I hold currently two records for swimming and diving, so that's Where one of them. Where are those records? Where are they? No, but, but what are the records that oh, you have? They're both um, for relays. I swim backstroke and I sprint, I sprint freestyle. So backstroke okay. for one relay and then sprint freestyle for the other. Okay. And one of them was rebroke a few years ago. This is an academic letter. And then you get a bar for each additional time you letter. So that's what these two are for. Yeah, and there's and then, no, no room left on that. Yeah. <laughs> And then here, this says um, yeah, graduation. that's my graduating year, okay. 11, 2011, this year. And these are two more additional bars. And then all conference for swimming and diving, that's my other record holding bar. And then this is relay for life. And I wasn't able to get track and field on here, but, oh, there's another academics. But that's about can it. it. Get an extension on your sleeve or <laughs> put it on? No. Wow, this is very uh, impressive. And then on the front, we have the girls swimming state participants so yes in 2006 very good uh how often do you run um well i run if you I, do try out i try to run as much as i can it's definitely hard during the school year when i have so many things to do just academic wise and now i'm applying for scholarships and seeing how many things i can do um just looking into colleges, but I try to run at least two times a week, if not more. I know my mom might disagree, but mm -hmm. as much as possible, definitely, and more throughout the summer than in the winter. Okay. Um, could you say any particular person or persons that have had the most influence? Uh, we'll do one family and one non-family. So um, the biggest influence on you? I think Some probably person. my biggest influence on me within my family would be my dad just because I think that he overcame so much throughout his life. He, um, he immigrated to the United States when he was around 20 years old for college and pursuing his educational he career. Come from? He came from Jordan in the Middle yes. East. So I a huge, huge cultural difference. So I, com I have to commend that. And I definitely look up to that just because it's so hard to do. I think even me going out for college, I'm so nervous just to leave the state or anything like that. So I think that the fact that he's able to do that is outstanding. And even now, he continues to play a large role in my life. And he has his own business now. And I couldn't look up to him anymore. Mm -hmm. Good. And um, how about mom? Mom Mom is amazing. She's always been a huge, huge and part of my is? life. Her name's Deb. Okay. Deb Bata, and she also plays a huge part in the school district. She plans out, like I said, all the stuff. She's been there since I was in elementary school, and she still does a huge part. She's even planning out our senior all-night grad party right now. And I honestly, I used to say that I, like, I wouldn't say I regret it, but I'd always be like, Mom, why do you always have to chaperone the school dances and do all those things? But I honestly could not have imagined my life being any different without her playing a huge, huge role every step of the way. Okay. And outside of family it could be a teacher or anyone else um, that has had a fairly significant impact on your life i think that 
As far as that goes, I wouldn't be able to single anyone out, but I think that I really, really look up to people, especially politicians that are able to overcome the adversity that it takes and take a huge role in you know, being in the eye of criticism and just taking that in. I think that especially as student council president, I don't even think that my role is that huge, but there's so much even with that role that it takes to, you know, take in all the, you know, things that are said and stuff that's done against you and mm -hmm. just kind of take that and move on stronger and move on better and continue in fulfilling your role to make a place, a, a better place to be. Mm -hmm. So I definitely look up to major politicians and ones that are able to overcome that. Okay. Uh, any favorite book, fiction or nonfiction, that you'd like to share? <sighs> I've always loved uh, The Giver. That was my favorite book ever since I was young, and I still love that book. Also, and, and share what that's about for viewers. It's, so it's kind of like, um, it reminds me of 1984, mm -hmm. and it's about kind the of... Orwell. Yes, yes, George Orwell, 1984. That, that's about like... Um, um, what the world would be like, you know, if you were kind of under the eye yes. all the time. So I really like that book. Okay. Um, do you have any hobbies outside of your action-packed day and nights? Yes. I love to swim. Um, I've always done that. In fact, this winter is my first without swimming. So that's kind of a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. Good. And uh, favorite food? Favorite food. I can't choose one. <laughs> spaghetti. If I that's love our last, your last dinner, what would that be? Uh, Chipotle. Okay. I definitely would say Chipotle. <laughs> I couldn't choose the last dinner. I don't know. Okay. But I'd probably say Chipotle. Okay. Um, our time is running out, and I've so much enjoyed visiting with you, Hannah. And I know how proud your parents are, and, uh, and Tartan as well. Uh, I am very confident you're going to be successful, uh, continue to be successful, but in your uh, career choice and uh, the worlds before you, um, you have really accomplished a great deal. And uh, for going into journalism, uh, you project yourself very well. And with uh, what you've done, I'm sure you get a lot of great scholarship offers for college. I really mean that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And uh, for advice for students or others that may be watching, uh, let's, for students first, what would your advice be? Students, like I said before, getting involved is the best thing you can do, especially in high school. I mean, I really, really think that there's something out there for everyone, whether it's being in a sport, being involved in the community, or just finding a volunteering event that you can do. Being involved is the best way to both make friends and better impact the community, and it's really better for yourself. Yeah. Get involved. And, and how about for non-students? We'll go with parents that might be watching or grandparents. Uh, what's your advice for them in trying to better understand your generation? I would just kind of say communication, you know. If you talk to your student, talk to anyone that you know, you'll know what's going on and maybe that'll help you help yourself find a way to be better in tune with that. Okay. And uh, in terms of the Relay for Life and other activities, if uh, anyone watching would like to contribute or learn more about that, they could contact the school or there's a yes. website, but yep. what would you suggest? Um, well, if you go to tartanhighschool.org, um, there is a link underneath activities for Relay for Life, and you can talk to our, the advisor for that and for HIC is Ms. Churchill, mm -hmm. and she'll be more than willing to help you figure out how to do that. And I would definitely encourage everyone to. Okay. And uh, words again about the student council to your colleagues that uh, are on the council with you. Uh, any shout out to them that you'd like yes, to Yes. I honestly would not be able to have done everything that I could have. And we would not have been as successful without the amazing backbone I have. And that is the student council. So thanks for everything, guys. And I appreciate it. Okay. Well, Hannah Batana, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you us. for having me. And uh, you're going to go places, I guarantee you. <laughs> thank you. Viewers, uh, isn't that something? Uh, Hannah's done a wonderful job at Tartan, and we're so proud of the students in District 622, and there's so many wonderful stories throughout our state, so please support our schools, support the projects, the programs that she's talking about. 
If you have questions, I encourage you to contact Tartan High School to learn more about what they're doing or at the local schools in your area. Uh, education, it is our future. If there's any question that you'd like to share with me or concerns, give me a call as well. My cell phone, home phone is 651-770-0283 or call me at the Capitol, 296-6820. With Hannah Bata, I'm Chuck Wieger. Thank you very much for watching. You sure got to climb a lot of steps to get to this Capitol building here in Washington. Well, I wonder who that sad little scrap of paper is. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Well, it's a long, long journey to the capital city. It's a long, long wait while I'm sitting in committee. But I know I'll be a law someday, at least I hope and pray that I will. But today I am still just a bill. Gee, Bill, you certainly have a lot of patience and courage. Well, I got this far. When I started, I wasn't even a bill. I was just an idea. Some folks back home decided they wanted a law passed, so they called their local congressman, and he said, you're right, there ought to be a law. Then he sat down and wrote me out and introduced me to Congress, and I became a bill. And I'll remain a bill until they decide to make me a law. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I got as far as Capitol Hill. Well, now I'm stuck in committee, and I'll sit here and wait while a few key congressmen discuss and debate whether they should let me be alone. Oh, I hope and pray that they will, but today I am still just a bill. Listen to those congressmen arguing. Is all that discussion and debate about you? Yeah, I'm one of the lucky ones. Most bills never even get this far. I hope they decide to report on me favorably, otherwise I may die. Die? Yeah, die in committee. Oh, but it looks like I'm going to live. Now I go to the House of Representatives and they vote on me. If they vote yes, what happens? Then I go to the Senate and the whole thing starts all over again. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I'm just a bill, yes I'm only a bill And if they vote for me on Capitol Hill Well then I'm off to the White House where I'll wait in a line With a lot of other bills for the president to sign And if he signs me then I'll be alone oh, I hope and pray that he will But today I am still just a bill you mean even if the whole Congress says you should be a law, the president can still say no? Yes, that's called a veto. If the president vetoes me, I have to go back to Congress and they vote on me again, and by that time you're so By that easy. time, it's very unlikely that you become a law. It's not easy to become a law, is it? No, but how I hope and pray that I will, but today I am still just a bill. He signed your bill, now you're a law. Oh, yes! <laughs>